Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to an episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode 108 today for the Belgium Grand Prix in Season 6. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Hungarian Grand Prix, the debut for our brand new teammate, George Russell, as well, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. It was obviously an amazing debut for Russell with a win at the Hungarian Grand Prix. We did pretty well to once again get on a podium, and I've only just realised, ever since the uh, Azerbaijan Grand Prix, we've been on a roll of consistent podiums here. We've done really well. It's no surprise that we are leading the championship at this stage, now over the halfway point mark, obviously, having done the Hungarian Grand Prix, so the second half is fully underway now, and we've still got a pretty healthy lead in terms of relative to how close the championships have been in recent seasons. You know, we've got a decent gap to Leclerc there. Gasly has been doing very well to try and bridge the gap. Me and Leclerc did kind of pull out a nice lead to the rest of the pack, but people like Gasly are already now pushing and building momentum as it has been in the last few races, but, you know, still, myself and Leclerc are always there. You know, he's been inside the top five for the last four races. We've been on the podium. We've not been off it since the Monaco Grand Prix. So, really awesome progress. And for us as a team now, having Russell there, winning the race last episode, we'll see what he can do in this one. Now we have the foundations to actually take the fight to Ferrari and Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship. And now I'm feeling way more confident about us actually going and able to win that championship specifically compared to the, just the drivers. Obviously, I know it, historically on the F1 games by Codemasters in the series over the years, we've really focused always on the drivers championship. But uh, from this game onwards, now with a mode like my team, you kind of focus a bit more also on the team aspect because it is your team. You are signing your teammate. You you decide, you know, the facilities and whatnot. So I do feel like you take some pride and more kind of, you know, focus on where your team's actually going to finish as well. So uh, I think as you clearly saw last episode, a positive step forward. But the next two races are going to be quite interesting to see how they pan out because very different circuits to what we've just had. You know, a bit more top end speed is kind of needed, especially for the next one up, the Italian Grand Prix. But even here at Spa, even though, yes, it's a high speed circuit, I think the top end speed does matter quite a fair bit on the game, at least. So we might see teams like Racing Point and McLaren looking a bit stronger than they maybe haven't been in the last few. And maybe ourselves, Ferrari, Mercedes, might have a step back in terms of raw pace just due to that top end speed that we know Racing Point and McLaren have had consistently over the course of the last few seasons of this career mode season. But as we enter then the Belgium Grand Prix weekend, we did go ahead and purchase some few other reliability upgrades on the R&D chart. Of course, we've maxed out this car a long time ago in this season, apart from the reliability side, but that doesn't actually affect the pure performance. That's more just obviously the penalties or lack thereof if you have uh, some durable parts. So I'm just trying to ensure that myself and Russell don't have have any kind of last minute penalties maybe if we can help it towards the end of this season just to make sure it's you know purely on what we're able to do out there on track rather than you know being you know pushed back down 10 places in a crucial Grand Prix maybe towards the end of the year when we're fighting you know Ferrari, Merck, the other teams and me personally obviously the likes of Leclerc and Gas in the championship and of course obviously if Russell was to get a penalty that wouldn't help our cause as it you know did never help our cause if Hamilton was to get one but more so than ever now would Russell actually perform well, I don't want to see him knock down the order just because he's inherited some, you know, unreliable parts from Hamilton's car at the start this season. But Q1 has come and gone then, and Russell is topping the session. Ocon looking pretty quick in the McLaren. Obviously, hard to tell what the pecking order really is in Q1. As per usual, with my quick teammates, they're always very good in Q1, and then we're going to start to catch up in Q2 and Q3, you'd hope. So let's see now the second part of qualifying. This will maybe see where the real pecking order is in terms of where racing point are going to be, where McLaren are going to be. Like I said, I expect them to be a little bit quicker just because you've got these kind of sections up the, you know, Kemmel straight and also the back straight through Blanchimon, you know, areas where, especially with Slipstream, those cars are going to be very decent indeed as we now go a little bit wide there, extending the circuit on our lap. A little bit uh, hustle and harried around there with some understeer kicking in. We are running a little bit lower wings than maybe you would want to to make sure our car stays good in a straight line. I'm hoping Russell side of the garage has done that as well to make sure our car is looking quick. And so at the moment, P2, not too shabby there, Giovinazzi goes faster and we make it through, Russell in a very strong P3, us in P4, but the big 
big thing to look at and a massive shock for not only this session, but the championship fight here maybe is Charles Leclerc is knocked out in Q2. He's had a horrendous time. He's made a mistake surely because his teammate Giovinazzi, the man who's been nine tenths slower than him in some qualifying sessions. I think, remember just last episode, I think he was nine tenths slower than him in Q3. And this time Giovinazzi's P2 in Q2 and Leclerc joins the two Red Bulls, uh, embarrassingly knocked out in the second part of qualifying. Both McLarens through, both races points through with Albon looking mightily quick here and the two Mercs and one Alpha Tauri so interesting times now for the top 10 shootout where one of our main championship rivals is knocked out our closest one in Dikas Gasly you know he's in the championship fight I guess in third place but remember he's a fair fair few points off Leclerc before you even get to uh, how many points he's off me so this is a massive massive advantage for us now heading into the rest of this race weekend but we're now then into the top 10 shootout starting our first flight lap you can see though conditions a little bit more overcast than they were in Q2 and especially Q1 and off the back of turn one the traction was a little bit of an issue you may have seen me soaring away at the steering wheel trying to control that right foot of mine and the car so maybe some colder conditions maybe helping out some other teams as Ocon goes quickest of all as we now get a tyre on the grass and a screen freeze for good measure halfway through that spin and that is a massive issue for us it's uh, not as detrimental as it may have been way back in season three, I think it was, when we spun at the same place, but that was in the wet and we went steaming towards the wall. This time, it was a simple error of just a little bit too left-hand side. You know, I tried to get the nose in turned earlier because there was so much understeer in sectors one, so I was trying to compensate for the track and being a little bit colder, but going way too tight on the line, and that curb can really bite your back. And then as we come into the garage, I thought, okay, it's fine, it's fine. We've got one more lap to go. We've got two fresh set of tyres. No issue, but when we enter the garage, my engineer tells me this, and this was a massive surprise to me. We're expecting some rain soon. Expect the first drops in the next few minutes. So in typical fashion around such a long circuit like this, there is some surprise rain on the way, which I was genuinely shocked at because the entire time the weather forecast pre this entire race weekend loading into qualifying, it, there was no chance of rain. There was no symbols for rain whatsoever throughout this entire weekend. Maybe you should have seen it coming with the overcast conditions at the beginning of this top 10 shootout. But here we are then. The rain's fully not come yet, but I think it's starting starting to just subtly fall at the moment because the grip levels are a little bit iffy. We are, we have gained some time on our first uh, first flyer in sector one. Then obviously we gain a heap of time going past the place where we span it at. But uh, there was actually a decent amount of time I found in sector one compared to my first lap. But now the rain is falling as we go into the bus stop chicane. That will affect our traction more than anything. As we go across the line, 12.3 seconds gained but it's only enough to place us in P7, and other people are already on the lap. It is raining, so they may not go any quicker, but we are not going any higher than P7 in this Grand Prix. And that is, well, doubly down to one, the mistake we made, a massive error now in hindsight, looking at the rain on the way, because it just meant we couldn't get a good lap in. The last sector definitely was tainted with the rain falling down on that second flyer of ours. And in the end of it, we're down to P9. And George Russell, he was denied pole position last race by a late lap by Leclerc. This time he does the job in his second race only for the team. He bags pole position just ahead of a very quick looking Pierre Gasly, even the Stappen there, the two Mercs turning up now after being a little bit slow in Q2 and Racing Point go a little bit down the order and they're separated by the two McLaren sandwiched in the middle. Giovinazzi doesn't show the same pace he had in Q2. I think definitely the, the rain coming affected people's second laps for sure, but for us it's a very, very poor qualifying. Didn't make the most of Leclerc being knocked out in Q2 and in the end of it, as is the case in F1, sometimes those small errors like we made on the first flyer have massive consequences so now we're on the back foot going on to the race, but I don't think there's any rain forecast for Sunday. So let's just have a clean one, hopefully get in the slipstream of some cars and try and catch up to our teammate and have a very strong race for the team once again. We're in Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Championship. It's a race the great Ayrton Senna won six times and in 2019 Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher in 1992. So here we are once again ready to go racing through the Ardennes Forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners and massive elevation changes. 
It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there really is no place quite like Spa. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Should we kick off our conversation with George Russell? That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. George Russell will begin today's event from pole position. And it's Pierre Gasly in P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Albon, Lando Norris and Ocon, Stroll, Giovinazzi, the owner driver and Nick de Vries, Bottas, Leclerc, Carlos Sainz and Ricardo, Kvyat, Matsushita, Nicholas Latifi and Jack Aitken. Giotto, Magnussen, Schumacher, and Lewis Hamilton rounds off the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. So like I said, there doesn't seem to be any forecast for any actual rain here on Sunday. But I mean, to be fair, we had that on Saturday and we did get some. So you never know. It's such a large circuit that, you know, the, the weather system could be very different from one side of the circuit to the other. So let's keep on our toes. But it seems like it's pretty sunny around here. But it is getting overcast at the end of the race. So you never know with this game. Maybe there's some surprise rain at the end of this one. But if there's not, it should be a pretty straightforward one stop. Now, the one stop here says soft to hard ties. But... We know now from the last three seasons, at least coming to this circuit, once you have all the tire upgrades on the car, as I'm pretty sure most of these AI teams do, as well as our team, of course, we should be able to do a one stop from the soft to the medium tires. There might be a few people that opt for the hard tires if they think the tire wears a little bit too high for them. But I think, I think for us personally, we're definitely going to try and stretch the softs a little bit because they do, they are quite durable around here, around Spa. And then we'll go on to the mediums, nice and aggressive. Tire where it really historically has never been that high. Even with this season, with the tire levels being a bit higher than usual, I think I think we'll still be fine with that one. And it's going to be mostly, like I said, about staying in the slipstream of cars, maybe playing it tactically by not fighting too much in the corners if we want to try and get up to the sharp end and, you know, try and continue this podium streak we've been on since the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. In terms of the championship fight, obviously Leclerc being behind us already is a positive, but Gasly is there slowly grinding away and trying to catch up to us so we need to make sure we have another strong result but here we go then to five red lights and we're underway here at Spa for the Belgium Grand Prix and it's a great start for us fantastic one even as we go and try to jump three cars there on the left hand side of Ocon and the racing point of Stroll he's actually re-overtaken us to be fair on the inside we squeeze out Ocon though and we're up into P7 so a very positive start as Stroll tries to get Norris doesn't quite get him as we go through our Rouge and up the hill he has to tuck in behind McLaren. Someone also tucked up behind a car is Pierre Gasly. He's tucked up behind the rear wing of George Russell, the pole sitter, our teammate, our brand new teammate. And Gasly goes round the outside, tries to get the race lead. Those two are going to bang tyres, make some contact with the bodywork there. And in the background, Alexander Alban also maybe getting his nose in for P3 as we now try and sail round the outside of Lance Stroll. Catch him napping down the right hander into the left. Easy does it at the apex, but squeeze him out. Bit of a rear end kick, but we're up into P6, and it's been a fantastic opening half first lap here at the Belgium GP. Our teammate Russell still leads the way then. Gasly P2, Albin P3, then you've got Verstappen, I believe it is, followed by Lando Norris, and then ourselves. So we've actually done really well to get ahead of a load of quick cars, because I imagine the racing points are going to be quick today. As you can see, Albin keeping up with Gasly, so it's great that we're already ahead of Lance Stroll, and especially so we kept it ahead of Leclerc. We know how quick of a starter he can be, but at the same time, as much as we have seen clearly uh, previously in this season, the Ferrari is a very quick car. We've also equally seen when it gets stuck in traffic sometimes, it's maybe not as slippery as maybe they would like versus other competitors, so he may find it tough today, but a car that certainly is very quick in a straight line today is the racing point, and Albin especially in the hands of it, and P3 goes for a move for P2. Gasly gives him a good old squeeze to the grass, 
past, but Alvin gets the elbows out, and he's actually powered past him, and he's up into P2 in the Aston Martin livery at Racing Point, and now can maybe chase after Russell in our Arab Archer Racing Vodafone Mercedes car, but uh, Gasly down to P3, he's maybe going to have to try and come back. I'm surprised it was that easy for him, but that is just the pace of the Racing Point in a straight line. We've seen it, you know, at other circuits where downforce matters, it's not too quick. So, you know, I, I thought here and next race is going to be quite scary to see how quick Racing Point are. And maybe even McLaren is Lando Norris. is trying to find a way around the outside of Verstappen. The two do battle in through the bus stop chicane. They're still at it side by side. Tire wall to tire wall there. Lando Norris on the left-hand side. Verstappen defending the inside line into turn one. They're still at it. And we're just sat here with a bucket of popcorn watching what is a fantastic battle between Norris and Verstappen as they're now going to jostle for position as they go through a rouge up the hill and Norris with a bit of a wobble. Oh, an even bigger wobble. What racing this is. And we're now joining the party. We have to lift off there as we're snapping brake checks us a little bit. But we go through on the right hand side and we've made the double overtake as now it's three wide between Stroll, Verstappen, Norris at the end of the Kemmel straight. And Stroll has gone through for two overtakes in one as well. And Verstappen has just lost three positions rather than just the one from Lando Norris and uh, wow I mean what action that was that was insane stuff to watch Norris with a full tank slapper at the uh, the start of the hill at the crest and uh, you know he almost lost it that could have been a horrendous crash for him and then we held our own almost went to the back of Verstappen because we caught up to him so much so but uh, in the end a really nice double pass and now we've got some clean air to try and see if we can do anything to catch up to the top three who seem to be in a world of their own to be honest obviously us starting so far back doesn't help we've had to really fight to get up to this position I feel like if we did qualifying on the second row we would have been right there with Gassi and Alvin but instead now we're still in a battle with Lando Norris because that McLaren is so rapid that he's overtaken Stroll he's dropped Stroll by a whole second and now lap number eight we're going side by side is now Alvin and Gasly fight for P2 and in the same similar fashion myself and Norris are fighting the same exact fashion side by side for that right hander but Norris gets a great undercut line and he's on the inside we've gone horribly wide there as that is such a corner that just invites understeer and we almost go completely off the circuit just about hold it through and manage to just get the car parked in the necessary position to hold the position and stop Stroll coming through but Norris with a good piece of racecraft there forced me to go kind of deeper into the right hander to try and preemptly you know defend against him in doing so he just set me up for the dummy basically to the inside to fair play as we now go across the line we continue on for another lap as uh, the likes of Norris my teammate Russell they're all in and we're going to continue on for one more lap as our pit stop window will open on lap number nine like I said we're looking to stretch this stint to make sure we can make the mediums go to the end because there may be a surprise person or two that goes on the hard tyres and if they do and they happen to be ahead of us we should have the advantage on the medium so we're in along with Lance Stroll so we're the only two that went on to lap number nine. So we're going to have to see how everyone else is. I think Gasly also, yeah, Gasly also came in on this lap. He's already been in and out of the pit lane, just showing how far ahead he is on the road. But here we are then, the set of uh, yellow wall medium tyres. Pretty quick pit stop, no traffic to contend with. But here we come now, out the pit lane. There is Norris and Ocon is going to be there. And the uh, Frenchman overtakes us with the undercut. But he is one of those people I talked about on the hard tyres. So already off the pit lane exit we get a great run through a rouge up the hill down the Kemmel straight now with DRS uh, Ocon gives us a bit of a squeeze there on the left hand side there obviously used to be a bit of bad blood between us in this series when he used to take us out a fair few times I think back in seasons two or three but we're now up into P5 and we'll chase after his teammate Norris uh, on the mediums as well Gasly on the mediums Albin but Russell is on the hards and this is a straight fight for the lead this is Albin going for the race lead Russell slower on the harder compound attire the racing point trains so hard look at them go and it's side by side for that entire section but Russell just keeps his foot in it's Russell the Albin it's the virtual GP battle virtually here in our my team career mode and Albin is 
unable to make the move. He's kept in second place in the Racing Point car, and Gasly has now caught up due to that fight, so it might become a three-way scrap for the race lead. Could Lando Norris get in the mix? He's not too far away for us. Unfortunately, we're already losing a bit of time to Norris, as we've just not got too much pace on the mediums compared to that McLaren. But that doesn't matter right now, as all eyes are on this battle for P1 and P2 between George Russell in our car and Alexander Albin and the Aston Martin on the left-hand side. There he pulls out for the race lead. Can he get it? We wait, we wait for the camera shot, and Albin's done it! Round the outside, and this time, second time lucky, on the end of the Kemmel straight, had enough overspeed to just go sailing round the outside, and Albin leads the Belgium Grand Prix. Now, can he see this through to the end? He did lead the Austrian Grand Prix, remember, and bottled it with some tyre wear and a mistake, so let's see, can he make up for that race, and can he make up for that lost win, potentially, but as we cut on later into this race, further back, we haven't seen too much of him, but this is Leclerc trying to go and attack Esmen Ocon in the second McLaren. Obviously, Lando ahead of us, Ocon behind, and Leclerc trying his best to try and get up into P6. By the time we get to lap 18, I've missed the overtake somewhere, but Leclerc did overtake Ocon. You can see in the top left, as now you can see also in the top left, the top three all setting purple lap times there. Albin, Russell, and then Gasly. So those three pushing hard. Norris is slowly but surely catching up to them, and also that means he's pulling away from us. So i got to say, unfortunately for us in our race, a bit of a dud in terms of this second stint. We're actually low on fuel as well, so we're trying to save some fuel with standard mixture. But we're kind of in no man's land right now. We've got enough pace to stay ahead of Leclerc and Ocon, but we've not got enough to kind of keep up with Lando Norris, unfortunately. So a bit of a quiet, sedated second stint for us. And to be fair to season six so far this career, we've been overdue a bit of a quiet race for ourselves individually as the AI are the ones taking the show here. And look at this fight between Ocon. Ocon and Leclerc. Ocon on the hards. Well, obviously, as we go on through the laps, those hards will become a little bit more raceable. But Leclerc manages to defend the Frenchman and just maintain that P6 position. Meanwhile, here is a fight now on the end of the last lap of the Kemmel straight. And Gassi can't quite make a move there. Didn't have enough overspeed with DRS. Can he do anything in the last sector? There's some traffic there for Russell. This is the last lap. Albin looks to be holding through this lead. And so he's going to make up for the Austrian Grand Prix where he lost the victory, lost the lead after some tyre wear and some driver error. He's going to come through to win the Belgium Grand Prix and looks like Russell will just about keep P2. Gas is giving him a, such a good run for his money there in P3. But it's the tie Brit Albin for the Aston Martin Racing Point team wins the Belgium Grand Prix. Russell in P2. Look how close Gasly is though in P3 and Norris in the end only finished about a second or two behind Gasly so he's done really well, had some mega pace that I just couldn't keep up with basically and so like I said, overdue maybe a quiet individual race for myself just didn't have any sort of pace compared to those top guys, we had enough pace to keep it ahead of Leclerc and Ocon of course, but uh, yeah in the end of it Leclerc got the drive of the day, thought Albon kind of deserved it, but uh, what a banger race for the race victory. A difficult race then on one of the all time classic circuits, but they persevered to take the win here today what just gave them the edge over the competition today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. The Racing Point team will be very happy with today's performance and the final result. Another display of excellent driving and excellent teamwork and a well-deserved first place finish. That is a massive victory for Albon. I think that's his first ever F1 race victory in our career mode of ours. We've seen Lance Stroll win, you know, three races last season. He won, I think, one race this season, if I if I remember correctly. I literally even can't remember how, what, what this season's been because it's been such a whirlwind one. But that's Albon's, definitely his first uh, career win in this career mode save of ours. And what a way to do it in a, in a great overtake around the outside of George Russell at the end of the Kemble straight. But look at the lap times there. Yeah, the top three and even especially Lando Norris in a world of their own in terms of race pace on the mediums compared to myself and anyone behind me. So in the end of it, we actually still maintain a healthy lead in the championship to Leclerc as we consistently have beaten him once again in this race. Gasly though gets a little bit closer. So the Frenchman is slowly, slowly trying his best to get in the mix with myself and Leclerc. But we, you know, us two, we've been so consistent before that, it, it, you know, he's finding it hard even though he's getting some podiums now. So we 
still have a very decent lead in career mode terms, really. You know, 11 points is quite massive, really, if you consider how close the championships have been in, in previous seasons gone by. So still very happy in the position we're in. And even happier when you look at the constructors table now with Russell getting a second place and us in P5. That means we go top of the table because Ferrari had a very poor race today. Leclerc did well to recover. Giovinazzi went backwards, unfortunately. No surprise in a way because this season he's been, uh, unfortunately, quite poor co compared to how strong he was in Season 5. So we're now taking the lead of the championship. So that's mega. Two races in and Russell's already had that sort of impact. But remember, you know, next race might be a similar story in terms of Ferrari being slower. Mercedes may be a little bit weaker of racing point. McLaren really sharp at Monza. But then you've got Singapore and Japan, races like those where Ferrari and Merck will come back and be strong once again. So it is not over. There's still so many opportunities for our rivals to take points off us and take this lead back. So we can't rest easy knowing that's all to come. But what a banger of a race with the AI today between Russell and Albon, the virtual GP battle virtually here with their virtual AI in this career mode save boss. Guys, if you did enjoy the episode, then be sure to smash that like button. And let me know what you thought in the cons play. If you're on your own here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.